Joining us now is Yossi Matias, Vice President of Engineering at Google and the head of the Google R&D Center in Israel. Thanks for being here, Yossi. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yossi, you're involved with AI for social good and you've worked on an impressive number of projects surrounding that. How did you get into that area? How did it start up here? So in a way, we were working on social good from the early days in the Google. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, it's part of the DNA of the company to try and use technologies to solve problems for people. And obviously in the last couple of years where AI is getting uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we are became a, an AI first company and AI had all these advancements. Uh, so suddenly we started looking into how to leverage on AI, how to use it to solve those problems societal problems that can help out uh, people in a profound way. And specifically, you've worked on flood prediction. And in my experience, predicting the future is not a task best left to mere mortals. So I'm curious if you could tell us how you got started on that and how it actually works. Sure, yeah. There's a known saying that prediction is hard, especially about the future. Uh, so I've been leading a team which is working on crisis response where the mission of the team is to develop technologies to help people during crisis, natural disasters and, uh, and other crises, by providing the right information to people. And, and in fact, my involvement that going back uh, eight and a half years where as a user, I, I had the experience, uh, we had a, a devastating fire in Israel and it was near our office in uh, our Haifa office. We have offices in Tel Aviv and Haifa. I was visiting that, that day and I didn't know what I should be doing. I saw this huge smoke. I didn't find any information on the internet. And, um, and this was actually the first time that I experienced the need for information. And it was not, not until I actually called the mayor's office that I got the phone number of actionable information. And in fact, um, at that time, I asked my team to see how to make that information available to everybody. And within a few hours, anybody searching for fire in Israel could get that information. So this was the first example where we gave kind of uh, actionable information to people. Now fast forward, we already, now we integrated into search something we call SOS Alerts, which essentially provides information about crisis, uh, major crisis when they happen. And one thing we discovered is that uh, you know, we can only give information which we have. But the, one of the most devastating natural disaster is our floods. They impact uh, up to 250 million people per year and there are thousands of fatalities because of them. And in many cases, we don't have information about where floods exactly is going to occur. So we knew this is an important problem, but it wasn't clear whether we can actually do anything about it. I, there was an engineer that just joined and he said he wants to work on a project that could help save lives. And I asked him, well, why don't you spend uh, part of your time seeing how much we can advance uh, using AI and other technologies in order to help out with flood forecasting. And within a few months, he made enough progress that we actually built a team around it. And um, in less than a year, actually, it was ready as a pilot in the Patna area in India. And that's how actually the flood forecasting effort came to life. And when, uh, when you first started looking at that problem, did you think it was solvable? So actually when I had a discussion with him, I told him that I'm not sure if it's, we're going to be able to solve it because in order to really, uh, and we are focusing on, on really what we call river and floods. These are floods where the river starts rising because of water. Then you know then there's likely going to be some floods, but the important information to know is exactly where the floods is going to occur because it's only then that people would take action. It's only then that people can eva would evacuate or it's only then where government can take action and evacuate the right people from the right places. Now, in order to get these accurate predictions, there's a lot going on. You need to have relatively uh, fresh information about where the water already is in order to make the predictions. We are leveraging on the fact that we have a better elevation models for um, many more places around the world. And that elevation model itself is computed with a lot of uh, some of the advanced technologies, uh, you know, machine learning uh, on aerial imagery and uh, other data that we have. It's using a lot of computational power to do hydraulic simulations and complemented also with machine learning techniques. And it's using information that we're getting from the, uh, through a partnership with the Indian government where they're actually measuring the water level in, re in quite a few rivers 
uh, and, and trying to actually make sense of what's going on there. So this is really a true partnership with the Indian government on that. And, um, and as it turns out, we could actually get into, pre into prediction a few hours before the floods actually uh, get into the level that it did of uh, over 90% accuracy, which was actually uh, quite impactful. Yeah, that's hugely impactful. Yeah, um, how were you able to connect with the Indian government and, and get these people involved in the project? You know, the beauty is that once we start to, when we started working on that, there's a lot of interest to collaborate. And I would say that on many of these societal problems, the notion of collaboration between companies and communities and entrepreneurs and governments, I think this is one of the areas that we need to see more of. Mm -hmm. Because these are big problems. And we do need to have this kind of community effort and global effort in order to really tackle them. That's cool. Thank you so much, <laughs> Yossi. And thank you for helping create this environment to be able to make these projects It's a privilege <laughs> to be able to have this kind of environment and to work with people who care about how to use technologies to solve big problems. Mm -hmm.